Today, we are going to breathe new life into this PlayStation 4 Pro. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. In previous videos, I showed you the PlayStation 4 Pro and I said this is a very viable alternative to getting a PlayStation 5. There are two things that everybody complains about with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Number one, it sounds like a jet engine. And number two, is that the loading speeds are quite slow compared to the PlayStation 5. Everything else is actually quite close when you consider it. So we've gone through in depth in other videos, the graphical differences, the frame rate differences, and all of that. But in another previous video, I showed you how to make your PlayStation 4 Pro not sound like a jet engine is taking off. So we got it much, much quieter. So now the next thing we need to do is make it perform a lot faster. And we're gonna do that by installing an SSD drive in here in place of the mechanical drive that came in your PlayStation 4 Pro. Now this PlayStation has a one terabyte drive and today we are going to install only a 512 gigabyte drive. That's strictly because of cost. Poor guy. So this drive was less than $50 Canadian on Amazon. It is not a fancy drive. It is not an expensive drive and it certainly isn't the best drive you can get. There are better drives. They would cost you more money. Now the question that you're going to ask is you know how much better are they the thing is an SSD is significantly faster even the cheapest SSD is significantly faster than the regular hard drive that is found in your PlayStation 4 and your PlayStation 4 Pro so any SSD will be a huge upgrade now you can spend more money and get the better faster SSD and it will be a little bit better than this SSD so that's why we went with the budget one. Now, if we wanted to go for a one terabyte, it would have cost about $80 Canadian. This is actually a viewer's PlayStation that we offered to upgrade. So they said that they didn't want to spend more than 50 bucks. So that put us with a 512 gigabyte drive. The process will be exactly the same. And we will show you how to swap the hard drive and then install the updated software. So you really only need three things to do this. The drive, obviously. You will need a screwdriver, which I use this. It's a Pickwick brand, but it works quite well. It's a multi-tool screwdriver. So this one is what's called a Phillips, which means it's a star-shaped screwdriver. And you will need a USB stick. Now the USB stick does not need to be very big. If you have an old one gigabyte USB stick, this will work fine for you. This particular one I think is a 16 gigabyte, which is fine. It's still, it doesn't matter. You just need at least one gigabyte to do this. I'm gonna walk you through everything. Now, who needs to do this? Someone who's doing an upgrade definitely needs to do this, but you may also have hard drive failure. So it's not that you just want to upgrade. You could be experiencing locking up. You could experience freezing. You could experience game crashes, unexpected game crashes, which is what this particular user was experiencing with the drive that was installed. So it was clearly time for a drive because the one that was in it was failing. So that's a perfect time to go for an SSD upgrade. So there's a number of reasons why you might want to do this. So it's, it's not like it's some vain thing, but this will also help make this PlayStation 4 Pro last as a great gaming system for at least a couple more years before the PlayStation 5 is a lot more available in stores and someone's looking to do a full proper upgrade. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is unplug it obviously and turn it around. And we are looking for this little cover right here, which will be right next to your LAN port. Now this cover is broken, so it actually just pops right off. But if you can't pop it off, you can use your screwdriver to pop that off. What that's going to do is expose this screw right here. And all we need to do is undo that one screw. It will have the PlayStation symbols on it, the cross, the circle, the triangle, and the square, and it should be black. Once we take that out, these little things here are actually made for your fingers to hook on, and then that will allow the drive tray to slide right out. It's all we need to do to get the drive tray out. Now there's gonna be four screws holding the drive into the drive tray, and all we're gonna do is take those screws out. That is one drive out. We'll put that, I guess, over there. Now we need to open up the new drive. 
which shouldn't be too hard to do. There's not gonna be a whole lot to it. And the new drive goes in upside down. So the old, don't put it in right side up or it won't, it won't stick in. We're gonna put it upside down with the pins facing away from that slot. Now we're gonna use the exact same screws that we pulled out to hold the new drive in. Now that's really it. The drive is ready to slide right back into this slot properly. And it should go tight like that. Once it's in, our little screw hole will line up with the spot where it was before, as you can see there. So we'll put that back in like this, like that. And then if your rear tray isn't broken, you can reinstall it. We'll see if we can get this one to go in. Something like that. Now we are finished with the drive install, but this will not have the PlayStation software on it. And that's where this USB stick comes in. And that's where you will need a computer. So we're gonna walk you through the exact procedure for getting the software onto the stick and then getting it onto the PlayStation. So now that we're at the computer, we want to plug our USB stick into our USB port on the computer. I'm gonna do that right here. Now you get the sound to say that the USB has connected. It does not matter what's on the stick already. You will need to format it. So hopefully you do not need anything that is on that stick. We're gonna lose everything that's on the stick. What we're gonna do in this case, it is the G drive for me. We are going to right click it. We're gonna say format. For the formatting, we wanna make sure that it is FAT32 format. Some sticks will not accept a FAT32 format. If they do not, then you can also do XFAT, but it has to be FAT32 or XFAT. It cannot be NTFS, okay? So we're gonna go for FAT32. We're not gonna call it anything, and we're just gonna say quick format. We're gonna hit start. That'll pop up a warning that says formatting will erase all data. So if you had any data that you need, now is the time to pull that data off before you click OK. We're gonna click OK and it will format. And there we go, now it says format is complete. So we can close that. So now we're gonna to go to the internet. We're gonna open up our favorite browser. We're gonna to go to Google and we're gonna search for PS4 Pro Firmware Download. That will take us to playstation.com, right to this page, okay? And I can put a link in the description just to make it a little bit easier for you as well. So there's gonna be two options on this website. So there's gonna be how to update the PS4 console system software, and there's gonna be how to reinstall the PS4 console system software. We want to pick the second one because we are reinstalling the entire software. So we're gonna click here, to download the PS4 console reinstallation file. So you'll see the file is up here. It is about one gigabyte in size and it should only take a minute or so to download depending on your internet speed. Okay, once it is done downloading, we want to open up the folder where it went to. So here it went to ps4update.pup. That is what the file name is called. Now we also want to open up our USB stick, which in this case is USB-G. We're going to create a new folder and we're gonna call it PS4. It needs to have the caps, capital P, capital S, four. Inside there, we're going to create another new folder and it's gonna be called update. Again, all in caps, it has to be all caps, update. Now inside there is where we will drop our PS4 update.pup file. So you'll see the file is going to transfer. It's going to take a little bit because this is a USB 2.0, but it is what it is. Now that the file is on the USB stick, we are done everything we need to do at the computer. So it's time to go back to your TV and your PlayStation 4. So we're going to just use the computer monitor at my workstation. We've got the PlayStation 4 here. We're going to plug the power end in to the back here, and we're going to plug in the HDMI cord into the back like that and then we will turn the playstation on now i might have to switch the input hdmi one and then you can see it's going to boot up and it's going to give us an error it'll say cannot start the ps4 plug in a dual shock 4 using the cable so we're going to plug the cable in right here waiting for the light to start kind of shining yellow to say that it's connected and then we'll push the ps button on there which will connect it to the playstation 4. now it's going to say connect a usb storage device that contains an update file so that's what we just did here for version 10.01 or later the reason it wants 10.01 is because it knows that this system was last updated to at least 10.01 
because of the memory storage that it has. So you can't downgrade the system, but that's okay because we put the latest software on here. That's no big deal. We're gonna go over, say okay, and click X. Now all it's gonna do is scan the file on this USB stick and decide if we've put the right file on there before it can continue. It's gonna take a while, but it will eventually come to this and it will say PS4 will be initialized. All users and all data will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? You have no choice. If you say no, you will get stuck. You have to remove all user data. They're like, that's just, it is what it is. So we're gonna say yes. And then it's gonna say, okay, fine, we're initializing. Your PlayStation will reboot and then it will go to the system software update screen as you see here. It will say installing the update file, do not turn the PlayStation off. This should go pretty quickly at this point. And here you can see the PlayStation software has installed. It is now ready to do a regular boot up. It'll be a fully factory reset PlayStation 4. So it's gonna go through all of the same initialization steps. So it's gonna ask you to attach your controller, for example, and then you gotta go through the entire setup. We'll say set up later, skip, 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 create a, we're in mountain time seven, and then there we go. We are now, user one is in the PlayStation 4. We can go to the settings and we can go to storage. And what you will see is that we have 419 gigabytes free with six megabytes used. So we've got all of the storage that we would expect. This is a full SSD install running on a PlayStation 4. So now you can take your USB stick out. You probably will never need this again, but we do have it just in case. And that's it. You can now go and set up your PSN account and log into the internet, download all your games, just like you had before. It'll take a little bit because you have to go and re-download everything. But once it's on the hard drive, it will play significantly faster and as you can tell, I mean, this thing is running super, super quiet right now. We've done full stress tests with Call of Duty running on this and it gets warm for sure, but it does not get loud. The fan does not go into jet engine mode anymore now that we've done all the fixes. And this system is now rock stable. It will load into games just as fast as your PlayStation 5, or maybe a little bit slower, not much, but just a little bit slower. And it will last you for quite a few more years before you really need to do an upgrade. Now I know some of you are saying, well, what if I have a PlayStation 4 Slim or the OG Fat? PlayStation 4. Can I do this and that as well? Yes. yes, the process is the same. On the Slim, all you do is just slide this over like that, and the hard drive is right in here. So it's exactly the same process. You'll use the exact same, and in fact, you can use the same USB stick to load the software onto your PlayStation 4 Slim, exactly like we just did on our Pro. So the procedure would be the same no matter which PlayStation you have, if you're looking at doing an update to your hard drive. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.